This week's shout out goes to DeviantArt creator Sarah Widianti. To view more spectacular pieces like the ones before you now, be sure to click on the link in the description below and provide this artist with as much support as you can offer. Myself and everyone here at this channel wish you only the greatest amount of blessings for you and your future projects. If you too would like to have your art featured on this channel and receive a shout out in the process, be sure to send me your art for either this channel, Creepypasta, or other fandoms I am involved in to either my email, Twitter, or Tumblr. All links are on screen now and in the description as always. Now, without any further ado, let us delve into tonight's reading. Record Grooves I am a huge record fan. I don't buy CDs. I rarely download music digitally. Most of the time, I just go to the record shop to buy used records. I am also a huge fan of electronic music. Ask me to name 20 Kraftwerk songs, and I would be able to. So I was surprised when I came across a tiny independent band called Electrostool. From what I have heard, the name is Russian for Electric Steel, and it is also the name of some Russian town or city, but I digress. They only released one album back in 74. It was entitled Record Groove. I looked at the record online on some crappy independent record company website. It was a 7-inch single, and for all you younger folk out there, a 7-inch single has only one song on each side of the album. After looking at the information, I saw that the record was just one song, but split into two parts. The title of the song was Electric Chair. So I have no idea where they got the title, Record Grooves from. I did a bit more research, and I was shocked to find that this is actually an incredibly rare single. Only 25 copies were made. That was because of financial problems back in the 70s, they could only produce that many. At least, that's what I was told on the website. This was one of those records that I just had to get. I went down to the record shop which I mentioned earlier. It was a tiny corner shop with a red door inside, but inside it was every record collector's dream. There were records everywhere, some in fantastic condition. If there was one place that record would be, it would be in this shop. I went and talked to the record shop owner, Mark. He's a real record boffin, so he would most likely know about the record too. However, I was wrong. He looked kind of puzzled when I asked him about it. He said he had never heard of it. I was kind of disappointed, but I looked around anyways. After looking around for a while, I found it. I couldn't believe it. Unsurprisingly, the sleeve was not in great condition. It had a thick layer of dust over it, and the part of the card which the artwork was printed on was exposed. That's when I noticed something a little bit odd. The artwork was different. The artwork shown online was a black cover with lips in the middle. But, instead of lips, it was an eye which was wide open and what appeared to be a tear drooping out of it. Though, it didn't bother me too much. Many artists have different artwork for their albums, but there were only 25 made. Could there even have been different editions? Another thing which was odd was the record itself was in perfect condition, not a single speck of dust or scratch on it. I placed the record back in the sleeve and rushed back to the counter. I placed it on the desk and Mark looked at me strangely. 
Hmm. Strange, he said. I don't remember getting this record in here. How much? I asked politely, but with anticipation. Hmm. You know what? Have it for free. I don't see any price tag on it, and I don't remember getting this one. So, it's yours for all I'm concerned, he replied, still keeping the puzzled look on his face. I was surprised, but kind of happy at the same time. I didn't have that much money on me at the time, and I didn't want anyone else getting this record. I thanked Mark and made my way back home quickly. When I returned, I ran up to my bedroom and pulled the record out of its sleeve. I placed it carefully onto the turntable, switched on the record player, placed the needle on the first groove, and the record began to play. The intro was great. It sounded a lot like a Kraftwerk song, but with slightly deeper synths. It was also very catchy, and the vocals were incredible. But that's when things got strange. His vocals became more and more electronic to the point where he could barely understand a word he was saying. The music in the background went out of tune. It became almost unbearable to listen to. It was just a strange electronic nursery rhymes with loud, undefinable music in the background. Finally, and this is when things got really strange, he asked a girl in the same room to sing. There was a pause. The music kept playing in the background for a minute, and then you could hear the microphone move. That was when I heard a young girl crying and sniffling. Once again, Junior yelled at the girl. Sing! Sing! She would just keep crying, but each time Junior would yell at her, she would cry and yell louder. Then, she screamed at the top of her lungs for someone to help her. The music kept playing in the background as Junior chuckled to himself. I was starting to get worried. It didn't sound like she was acting. She was genuinely screaming for help. I continued to listen nervously. While Junior chuckled with a disturbed joy, you could hear him pressing what at first sounded like keys and buttons on a synthesizer, but with one large click, there was suddenly a loud crackling and buzzing noise, and the girl began to scream louder and louder. Then, I realized. I grabbed the sleeve from the desk, flipped it over, and looked at the back. The title of the song was electric chair. I dropped the sleeve in panic as I realized that the buzzing sound was not a synthesizer at all. It was a literal electric chair. I grabbed the record from the turntable, placed it back in the sleeve, and put the sleeve in my money safe. I did not sleep well that night. What I heard on that record was too much. The brutal cries of the girl and the subtle laughter of Junior was haunting. As my eyes slowly adjusted to the darkness of the room, I stared at the safe. However, I could not stay awake for much longer, and I eventually fell asleep. At about 4.30 in the morning, I was suddenly awoken. A loud, thick and electrifying sound filled the room. I jumped and looked directly towards where the source of the sound was coming from. It was coming from the record player, and to my absolute shock, I saw the record. It was playing on its B side. Once again, I could hear the electric sounds of buzzing as the laughter of Carl Jr. came out, and as hypnotic electronic music played loudly in the background. I jumped out of bed, ran towards the record, grabbed it, and switched on the light. I was so shocked to see markings on the record which spelled out the words, look, smell, and in smaller writing on the A side of it, the word electrifying. It looked as if someone had carved the letters into the record grooves with a burning hot nail. I couldn't take it any longer. I threw the record and the sleeve out the window, and the next day, I went out into my backyard and destroyed it. I was extremely quiet that day, 
Whilst listening to some old blues records to try and calm me down, I would look out at the window and see the bits of broken vinyl scattered across the yard. I would try to ignore it, but I couldn't. I then ran downstairs, grabbed a shovel, and went out back. I tried to grab the record, but it was extremely hot. I had to get a towel to pick up all the pieces. I dug a small hole and threw the bits of vinyl in the pit, as well as the sleeve. I poured some old vodka over the album, took one last look, and lit the bastard on fire. Once the flames were gone later that evening, I filled in the hole, and all that was left was ash and melted plastic. I was glad to get that piece of shit out of my life. Seven years later, I could still remember the horrors of that record, but I was not so bothered because nothing happened after I destroyed it. But then, I noticed something strange. Something which I had not noticed before. A smell, and a thick, strong one almost like the smell of burning chars or overcooked meat. That's when I remembered, and that's when I began to panic. The record had look and smell engraved onto the grooves, but I had my doubt whether this had anything to do with the smell. I began to follow the scent. It was coming from my basement. I then tracked the smell to a large crack on the basement wall. Strangely, this was the only crack on the wall, and I had not previously noticed it. I nervously approached it. Whatever that smell was, it came from behind the wall. I reached out my hand cautiously and touched it. It was incredibly warm whereas the rest of the wall was freezing, considering it was in the middle of winter. Suddenly, part of the wall collapsed, and dirt and bits of rock rushed in onto the floor of my basement. I ran back so that I didn't get crushed by the debris of the wall. I was shocked, but also infuriated that my wall just collapsed. I grabbed the shovel and started shoving dirt into a large bucket. My heart stopped, and I could feel my stomach churning. I saw a seemingly electrocuted body of a girl. Her face was black with burn marks, with smoke coming off of her hair, and her teeth were cracked and a dark brown color. Her skin was a crispy texture, and bits of her dead and burnt skin were layered across the floor of my basement and in the dirt. I saw that blood was dripping from her eyes, and the thick smell of burnt flesh filled the entire room to the point where I almost vomited. I collapsed onto the floor and crawled away in panic, silent but terrified. I wanted to let out a yell or a cry, but I was petrified. I sat for almost 30 minutes in silence. I was breathing heavily. I wasn't blinking, and I wasn't shaking. I wasn't looking at the body for 20 minutes, but I finally built up the courage to look at the burnt corpse. I turned, and in her hand was a copy of Electrostool's Record Grooves.